all right so we are recording it so <clears throat> the application that we are going to build a fresh application a new application uh, is for the credit card application process we are setting up a new bank let's say that this is the bank name the application name is credit card management system the credit card application process ideally uh, usually i mean see there is variation there are variations based on <clears throat> basically the bank and its requirement and its geography a lot of stuff right we will come back to that but in general there are four step process right the application submission uh, you will apply for the credit card some bank employee will review your application then the basically maybe automatically they will just set up if it is approved a uh, credit card account for you and then you will they will send the credit card to your address prescribed address there are several other things as well in between but we will come back to that <clears throat> let's try to understand this is a very new application very new application okay so uh, <clears throat> we will try to understand how do we set up application on pega first okay so we have logged in with uh, on the pega personal edition with administrator at the rate pega.com and install users and we have access to pega platform application at this point of time we cannot modify we cannot do anything in the pega platform application so what we will do is we're going to uh, basically create a new application let me take this out for the moment so we will here so how do we create a new application in pega well you got to go to the application menu okay in the application menu you have an option called new application okay click on the new application <coughs> All right, so this is uh, basically the screen that you get on the new application wizard. This is the first screen. Uh, build from scratch. We do not have any prior application that we could use to build our new application, basically, uh, which is called, which will be otherwise called build application, but no, no built on application. So we are going to build everything from scratch. So click on continue. <clears throat> now this is um this is 8.6 basically pega 8.6 this is the ui framework that pega offers right um we will discuss about these ui frameworks later as well during uh, basically the sessions uh, not today of course uh, in later sessions at this point of time please carefully choose theme cosmos this is the traditional architecture we will use theme cosmos for the ui architecture of our application so this our application will be built on the theme cosmos application this is an application provided by pega now you should name your application the name that uh, we have decided is credit card management system now don't click on create application click on the advanced in pega we build application for an organization and that actually <clears throat> creates class structure based on the organization so it is important to configure when you are setting up for the first time or even whenever you are setting a new application you need to make sure that the, you are selecting right organization or you are providing right organization otherwise deep pega provides a default organization name we don't want that okay so application id yes the description is uh, credit card management system but id cannot be that long so we will say credit card management system that's the application id okay this is going to be version one i will talk about the versioning how why it is three part this is all going to be included later the base language is okay let's keep english india <clears throat> organization name we have um, basically we have decided that uh, this is the bank name so usually it's abbreviation of the bank so b4b 
is what I'm going to use for the organization name D4B. Okay, don't worry about the division and unit, we will keep it as default. Okay, so this is it now. There are uh, Mm -hmm. uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, whatever we have installed, like uh, that particular version probably does not have the same options as what you are having, I guess, right? And that's uh, because... 8 point, uh, okay, sorry, mine is 8.6, 8.7, your is 8.6, no worries, I will tell you how to do that, okay? Don't, please don't do it in parallel at the moment, okay? Okay. All right, so... Um, this is this is uh, basically the application. This is the organization name division unit uh, B4B and this is the application Now this is where I need to explain you guys class Structure a little bit about the class structure before we go ahead So in Pega when you set up a new application the organization Organization is very important organization is B4B so Pega creates a class for organization. Now this class, the organization class is going to have every element that you will build within this. You can have a class created as a child class of another class as well. So this is your high level, highest level class, okay? Organization, for, as far as your application is concerned. Under this class, <clears throat> under the organization class, you will have an application class. So hyphen this is how we denote hierarchy in pega so b4b ccms credit card management system this is the organization class this is the application class so under the organization we have if you are creating more than one application in that organization you will have plenty of it for example you might create application 2 as well b 24 b app 2 that will be another application class okay this is absolutely okay then <clears throat> when you set up a new application pega also creates two more classes within the organization class one such class is data this is for organization layer data model which can be used in every application. It's not within any application. It's defined directly in the organization class. Okay, we will we will basically um, learn more about this. But at this point of time, just understand that Pega sets up two, three more classes within the organization. One such class is data, which is supposed to store the data models, uh, which can be leveraged across the organization in whatever number of application you set up. Okay. And then B4B, it creates an integration class. This is for the org layer integrations. <clears throat> so any rule that you are creating for the integrations, for example, in organization, doesn't matter how many applications you develop, but the single sign-on probably will be, same single sign-on concept or rule will be used for every application. Um, same uh, getting the data employee data is going to be the same for every application and integration of getting employee data could be put into the organization integration class right so a organization layer integration and organization layer data classes go here okay data class and integration directly in the organization in the application 2 in the application 2 pega creates these classes along with some more classes so in the application 2 we will have data in the application 2 we will have integration these are specific to the application this data is application data layer this is application integration layer okay which is com which is specific to your application and no other application will probably use it okay And then the most important class that gets created in the application layer is work class. Now this is called work pool of your application. 
all the business process that you will define you will define under work class all the flow uh, basically your workflow that you will define they will have their own classes but under the work class so everything every work every process that you will create um, basically for your use cases for your um, workflows they are going to be within an application they must be within an application of course because that those are application is specific so application work class now let's go back to pega you see the work class that is being set up is b4b ccms work class this is the work group name okay you can edit that but this is typical structure if you want to change something all right um, we will take it forward once the application is created but this part is very essential and i will reiterate that later as well let's save it now we can click on the create application <clears throat> so pega is setting up a new application for you all right so when you create a new application you need some user to access that application for purpose for different purpose by default it's cosmos authorities developer access okay so i'm going to set up a user you just type in mahesh at the rate b4.com let's say whatever user you want to add just type in that and click on add pega will create a, this user as um, cosmos author cosmos author means uh, basically admin user who developer user okay who can develop the application so when this user logs in they will be directly logging in into your newly set up application which is credit card management system this is the password that has been generated you can log in with this user and reset the password or you can reset the password right away just copy this and search this application this is this is user users are called operators in pega okay and that is also a rule so click copy that username and search see operator id got created mahesh at the rate b4.com if i open this so this is the user pega has set up when i provided that detail here you can add as many user as you want now go to the security tab of that operator rule and uncheck the force password and save it so that it will not ask me to change the password when i log in next time and let's update the password as well so please keep rules as password simple so just for the sake of not forgetting it so rules all is small that's the password and now i can save it so i will not need to reset the password now i can log in with this operator using rules password this is the username right so i have added one user that's enough i can just log off from here okay click on the log off i will log off now i can log in with the new user log in And it will log me in into our application the ccms the credit card management system application that we have set up by default the author um, basically role that we uh, selected for the user when we created it that was the only role available it actually lands us to devs app studio we will switch to dev studio for now to understand a few concept there are development that we do from the app studio as well as dev studio so let's just wait it for getting loaded for the first time it might take a little while So it is asking me to set up um, a case type i will skip it for now 
and just click on the dev studio this is called a studio menu and sorry click on the app studio this icon and then click on the dev studio and it will take us back to dev studio let me this is going to just open the application because the first time we are logging in it is going to open the application overview let's close it that's okay so this is our application now you see credit card management system this is our application uh, click on the app explorer you see that class work class getting created let's just uh, check other classes as well just give me a minute all right so <clears throat> this is the work pool class right that we were talking about um, during the notepad explanation <clears throat> what about the other classes so we were discussing about the organization class and all that right so see this app explorer through which we access all the classes so if you just remove organization class is only b2b right so remove this much now this is your organization class so see under the organization class okay so framework is another class we'll talk about that later like i explained um, there is going to be data and ink right see here under the B4B, there is data and there is int. And this is the application class like this, CCMS. Now, if you want to see the application class, just select CCMS. This is the application class. Under the application class two, we have data, int, work, and something called UI pages as well that we will cover later. And then we have the work class. All the thing that we will set up will go into the work class. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to this again when we add case type and workflows and everything. That's one concept. The other thing is if you open the definition of your application. So this is the credit card management system version one. When we set up the application, see we selected theme Cosmos for the UI architecture. So our application is built on top of theme Cosmos. The theme Cosmos application is built on pega platform okay pega rules so our application just below our application is theme cosmos and below theme cosmos is pega rules so our application is directly using the feature of theme cosmos as well as pega rules the other stuff is the rule set so pega when you set up your application for the first time pega creates four rule sets two rule sets or organization and these are b4b and b4b int b4b is a rule set to store normal rules all the rules basically non-integration rule all the rules and b4b int is supposed to be used to store integration related rules Similarly, two rule set for your application too. This is going to be CCMS and CCMS int. See, CCMS, the application rule set comes on top and when you execute rule, Pega will first look in this rule set, then this rule set, then this rule set, then this. This is the hierarchy. So CCMS, CCMS int, then B4B and B4B int. These four rule sets are set up by Pega itself when you set up your application. Okay. Uh, Mahesh, just a second. So when Pega is going to see it's at the highest layer, that's that would be at the application layer. Correct. And then it would be the B4B is the organ organization layer. What's that? 
so application and organization two layers are there it's just these are just two rule sets right in the, this is this is these two are for organization only one is to store every other rule another another one is to store the common integration related rules okay so first comes in the order of hierarchy first it would be the application and then the organization correct it? correct application is your specialized layer right that's where your application so organization is supposed to use reusable supposed to be having reusable component that is common for every application but there might be some variation that you might need to override in your application so that's why application is always the uh, most relevant if uh, let's say that you are looking for a rule called a pega will first search it in the application layer okay if it doesn't find a then it will go for up organization layer so okay okay so the order of hierarchy is first is the application and then the organization correct okay thank you no problem <clears throat> right so this is the application that has been set up for us um i want to explain you guys one more basic thing so you see this is uh, on the dev studio this is your login log off if you click on the operator log off login you can do here click on the operator it will open your operator record the ones who has logged in this operator has an access group. What um, is the Mahesh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, just going one step back uh, regarding that hierarchy and application layer and organization layer. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm a little uh, maybe uh, I'm overthinking, but if uh, A is a subset of B uh, mm -hmm. and we are searching, we'll search first search B and if we don't find that and so then we we'll go to subset. A, right? It's not subset. Yeah. The concept okay. is not about subset. The concept okay. is about reusing, built on. Okay, so A is built on B, means A is on top of B. So when you execute okay. your rules, it will be executing on top of A, actually within A. So it will look for local. It's just like that when you need milk, you will search for your home first, right? right. And then you will go to your parents' home. Right exactly like that it's not subset it's not your home is not within i mean if we talk about within so it's ultimately all pega you will look for your room and then you will go to your parents room so similar to that it's not subset it's it, it's it's two different applications or uh, two different layer okay one okay. layer is using whatever is available in other layer but when you are trying to see whenever i need something i will first look my uh, look if i have that or not then only i will go for someone right asking for help if i have that no so application is where your your code will be executing so it will look for look into the application first okay if it doesn't find then it will go to the class hierarchy i will talk about the inheritance as well shortly that will make more sense okay that will explain it okay. more clearly all right so <clears throat> that's basically the application setup okay now in pega we have something called inheritance i mean let us just like in java right it's based on java so inheritance what exactly is inheritance inheritance means that you acquire I mean, traditionally, if we say, um, if we just define it, it means that an object acquiring uh, the state and properties or using methods or, I mean, technically method, but basically uh, an object acquiring the facilities provided by another object, right? Or um, basically, um, it, it could be, say, uh, I mean, technically, we can say that that you are using the feature implemented in your parent class. That's the inheritance. You are using the features implemented in another class. That's inheritance. In Pega, we have two type of inheritance. One is called pattern inheritance. And another one is called directed inheritance. Pattern inheritance is based on the hierarchy. Okay. So if we see work is a class work class is actually 
child of ccms class correct and ccms class is child of b2b class so in the work class if i'm creating something and i'm referring rule a the pega will first look the rule a into work class if it doesn't find it will go to look into the inheritance path this path that you see here that work is inheriting from CCMS, CCMS is inherited. This is called pattern inheritance. It's based on the hierarchy. So work is pattern inheriting from the CCMS. CCMS is pattern inheriting from the B4B. That's the pattern inheritance, okay? It's a class structure based. Strictly parent child. So, Anything that is there in B4B can be leveraged by CCMS and anything that is there in CCMS can be leveraged by work and since CCMS can leverage the feature in the B4B as well, the work can also leverage those. This is called pattern inheritance. Okay. If you right click on this class and open the definition of this class. So. <clears throat> pattern inheritance is always basically inherited uh, always based on the class structure then there is another co concept of directed inheritance directed inheritance means you manually specify inheritance or manual inheritance Manual inheritance is uh, basically, let's say that um, we have two applications. Oh, let's say two classes. We have A. A is inheriting, B is inheriting from A and then B, C is inheriting from B. This is one class. And then we have A, D, F. Let's say C needs to reuse some feature available in D. Now D is not in the inheritance path of C, is it? No, it's not. So I can specify on C directed inheritance of A, D. So it can now, it can now inherit from D class as well. And A is obviously directly here, or I can inherit from F, right? So c will be able to inherit from f as well this is called directed inheritance now let me show you that in pega so the class that we have opened here work class of course it has pattern inheritance with ccms b4b but see directed inheritance is something that we put and it is directly inheriting from work hyphen cover hyphen class right so it can this class basically work class can actually in, uh, use the features properties methods rules defined in work work is itself ccms b4p b4b as directed sorry as pattern and can inherit or can use the method and rules defined in cover and work as well this is called directed inheritance let me explain this uh, through a few examples <clears throat> so let's say that in this class okay this is the structure we have a hyphen d okay so c is on the c class we have put directed inheritance of a hyphen d in c class we are looking for rule a now rule a is actually defined into a hyphen b hyphen c class rule a is defined there too okay it is defined there as well as same rule you can have in multiple classes this is defined into is defined into a hyphen d which rule a will be picked up when you refer it into c it will be picked up this one right 
because it is directly in this class only yeah this is in that class itself but now let's say that this is defined in this class then one a and d both now this is organization class by the way and this is another class and i have pattern inheritance with sorry director inheritance with ad in c and i'm trying to refer it in c the second one that is it okay so this is where you need to concentrate on this checkbox see find by name first that means find pattern inheritance will take precedent okay so you do have directed inheritance if you have this checked in so if you you do have directed inheritance from d so you could probably take it from d but the rule is also in a so first it will look in c then it will go in b and then it will go in a if it doesn't find in this class then it will come to d director inheritance okay so it will eventually find in a so which rule will be executed this one right but if i uncheck this if i uncheck that um, check box then it will look for the directed and ad1 will be picked up is that clear so the or the um, just, sorry like uh, can you just uh, tell it again so if i uncheck this find by pattern first then it will not try to force pattern inheritance first so it will in the c it will look for all the class hierarchy first okay so if i uncheck for example on c i do not have this checked in okay so in the c it will see it is not there in c so it will go to the directed inheritance before moving to b it will go to the direct because the c itself has the directed inheritance with ad right so it will see that okay it is there in the ad so this version will be picked up and it will not search for b and c a okay okay but if i have that checked in then it will first traverse through the direct uh, pattern inheritance and then check for the directed okay 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 so pattern inheritance i mean if you check that then uh, pattern inheritance would take uh, precedence Precedent. correct all right um <clears throat> so all the rules that we are creating in the parent uh, in the organization classes we are supposed to be storing them into organization layer rule set as well okay so that remember if you set up another application these two rule set will be reused there it will not be again created because an organization is same right so and we create we have organization layer for reusable thing that can be used in every application so whenever you set up something in the organization layer classes you should ideally store them into the organization layer rule set as well then only it will be available to other applications all right so that's the inheritance directed and pattern uh, inheritance we will build up on this further on this concept further but we will keep this session uh, this short only so in this session we learn basically the class structure how to set up an application okay forget about this credit card application uh, process flow we will take that into the next session we set up an application we used built on application um, basically the, theme cosmos we learned about how the organization how the class hierarchy gets created we learned about uh, how many rule sets get created and what are the purpose we learned about the inheritance and that's where we will stop this session in the next session we are going to take up uh, basically uh, this credit card application features and we are going to um, basically try to build a workflow which is case type in pega and how to approach that that's what we're going to do in the next session